and here we are back on the idol smash show channel this is the nova nexus welcome to our weekly torah chat discussion uh q a and just about anything torah judaism or monotheism ethical monotheism you would like to discuss we're here every thursday 8 p.m central i am james james the idol smasher at gmail.com if you'd like to get in touch with me and when i say uh we're here for you too that means that we would like you to join in uh we've, of course we've got the chat over here which i will be monitoring and uh you can also leave a comment or hit the if you if if, if you got a good question you can hit the uh, StreamYard link there in the comments, and that'll get you in here in the room, and uh, we can talk face-to-face. -face. Uh, today, we are in the Book of Numbers, of course. Uh, we do a Parsha study every week. Uh, Parsha is, uh, means portion, and there is a portion of the Torah which we, uh, which we read every week throughout the year. And uh, this week, we are on uh, Parsha Shalak right here. You can uh, see in the, the banner down below. Chabad.org is a good place to go. Mechan Mamre, Mechan-Mamre. Uh, is that .com? Is that, I, I'm, I'm always there. It's a, or .org as well. So it's MechanMamre.org. So, uh, Sephria, there is another a great translation. Or if you have a, any translation at home, is great. But I would suggest a, a Humish of some kind or a Hebrew based source because some of the stuff we're going to be reading about today is it's got some crazy different ideas and a lot of different. And of course, you know, if you know anything about Judaism, there's 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 10, 10 ideas for every two. Uh, <laughs> not it's not that bad, but no, I'm not, you know, there's a lot to it and a lot to discuss. So when you get closer to the source, it makes it that much better. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. We are simulcasting now here on uh, Torrid Friends and uh, and on uh, my channel, The Idol Smasher and streaming at facebook as well so uh i hope anyway i don't even want to go over there and look i don't want to look at the other computer i don't want to know uh we didn't get to make uh, a study last week we had some car issues and uh it turns out the old cars are, are, are just a little bit better in my opinion than, than the way the new cars handle things for instance back in you know the old days back when uh, they actually still had carburetors on cars uh if if you ran out, if your alternator ran out uh, your battery would take the heat until it just died and your car puttered out. It wouldn't stop. Today, we've got, uh, my wife's got one of these SUVs. And as soon as, I think the power just kind of fluctuated a little bit, we started getting flashing lights on the dashboard. It was like, you know, Christmas out there. These little lights flashing everywhere. And, uh, and, and we're not getting quite as much power. And I'm driving down this road, no shoulders, country road. Okay, Kansas sunset, driving in. Lady comes by and flashes your lights. You better flash your lights because, you know, it's nighttime. And I turn the lights on. And the power steering and the analog brakes. Oh, yeah. When you don't have analog brakes on an analog brake system, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real joy to try and get your car to stop without throwing yourself out of your own car. Uh, yeah, I'll be, and so I turned the lights back off and guess what? Everything ran smooth as, <laughs> no, it didn't run, but it, you know, the air conditioner quit and I got a little bit more torque. So we did make it home, had the car towed. It was, it was a messy afternoon, so I didn't get to hear, but uh, I wish we would have because, um, uh, we talked about, uh, the, the consequences of evil speech and from one of the, 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 the greater women of Torah, a prophetess, um, sister of Moses, this is Miriam. And uh, evil speech and what it did to her. And we're going to get on to how evil speech can uh, can affect, in fact, sure, can, can it affect an entire nation and change the course of history. Not always for the better. So once again, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll get over to that. I want to give a little uh, buyer because you got these this new little uh, gizmos here on on straight. Yeah, see, I got I got a little, you know. Ticker going and everything, so we look nice and official, but uh, we'll leave that up for uh, those of us who want to get in touch more. Of course, uh, TorahFriendsPodcast.com, uh, all updates there, and, and John's being a real real mensch. He really is, and uh, it lets me uh, simulcast on both channels now, which is kind of cool, and I, I really appreciate that, but uh, hopefully we'll see John a little bit. I'm hoping for Rosalie to get in here, too. I haven't heard from her yet, um, but she is around, so, oh, she needs a Lincoln. Well, let me see if I can link him over here. Here, there's your Lincoln right there. Link me, Rosie, baby. You linked. All right. Where do we begin? Now, I've got some neat stuff. Um, uh, I want to start off. Okay, well, maybe we should just read the thing first. Maybe we're going to read a little bit of it. Um, at least what I want to get into. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, numbers 13. I'm uh, going to be reading out of the uh, Stone Edition Chumash. And the reason why I say get a Chumash, for those of you out there who don't have one, 
who are new to all this and kind of want to know this is what a Chumash looks like. You're going to have everything in Hebrew over here. You're going to have the actual text of Torah, and then you're going to have commentary in, in Hebrew, um, and then translated to English over here. Uh, so you kind of get in, and, and every Chumash is different. Every study Bible is different. They're going to, they're going to take from some traditions and, and others are going to include certain aspects of maybe the Talmud that have been discussed in another translation. And, and, uh, I've got a Gutnik over here, which is great for Chabad. That's, that's kind of like the, their, uh, uh, I guess you'd say Chumash of choice. Um, but it really is best to get a Hebrew. So if you're following along, get a Hebrew Bible if you can, if not, no problem, because chances are, it's going to be kind of the same anyway. A few things might be different, but, uh, uh, for now, um, now let me get my readers. Let me get them out here. Rosie, I remembered. I remembered. Oh, there she is. That's ah, Caesar. There she is. I, I remembered my glasses. She's always remember, reminding me of my glasses. Hey, uh, hey how you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. Good to see All you. All right. Good to be seen. Glad the car's working better. Yeah, that was uh, that was a that was a fun night. It really was. <laughs> So I'm, I was just going to get, um, I wanted to read the story of the spies first and then okay. just so we can have it out there. And um, uh, starting at chapter 13, verse one, Hashem spoke to Moses saying, send forth men, if you please. And let that, where is Ross? Where's Ross? Mr. Bearden, we would love to see you in here again. Gosh, I, 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 every time Hashem says that, guess who I think of mm -hmm. among other places in, in the Bible too. Uh Send forth men, if you please, and let them spy out the land of Canaan that I have given to the children of Israel. One, one man each from his father's tribe shall you send every one a leader among them. Moses sent forth from the wilderness of Paran to Hashem's command. They all were <clears throat> distinguished men. Heads of the children of Israel were they. One for every tribe. I'm not going to get into that. We'll get it, two will matter, but... Uh, uh, these are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Hosea, son of Nun, Joshua. Moses sent them to spy on the land of Canaan, and he said to them, Ascend here to the south and climb the mountain. See the land. How is it? And the people that dwell in it. Is it strong or weak? Is it few or numerous? And how is the land in which it dwells? Is it good or is it bad? And how are the, the cities in which uh, in which it dwells? Are they open or are they fortified? And how is the land? Is it fertile or is it lean? Are there trees in it or not? You shall strengthen yourselves and take from the fruit of the land the days or the season of the first ripe grapes. They ascended and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to the expanse at the approach of Hamath. They ascended in the south and he arrived at Hebron where there were um, Ahiman, Shishai and Tamai, the offspring of the giant. Um, you can get to that one. That's, that's one of the giants. Yeah, you're thinking of the same race, apparently, uh, as the Nephilim. Uh, the, the, the big dudes, the big, huge giants. Ebron had been built seven years before Zoan of Egypt. They arrived at the valley of Eshkol and cut from there a vine with one cluster of grapes and bore it on a double pole. And of the pomegranates and of the figs, they named the place the Valley of Eshko because of the cluster that the children of Israel cut from there. Now, just think about the size of a cluster, just a cluster of grapes, which is like in our hands, it'd fit just, whole, you know, a good cluster would be flowing out of our hands maybe a bit. It took two poles and two guys to carry that thing. Those things are huge. If you've ever seen them in real life, they are huge, and that's understandable. Yeah, just... I bet you can find Google or Bing pictures of you know, oh, yeah. big Israeli grapes. Just, mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. <laughs> they returned from the spying of the land at the end of 40 days. They went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to the city, uh, to the entire assembly of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, and brought back the report to them and the entire assembly and they showed them the fruit of the land. They reported to him and said, We arrived at the land to which you sent us, and indeed it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. But the people that dwell in the land are powerful. The cities are fortified and very great. And we saw how, and we also saw they were offspring of the giant, 
Amalek dwells in the area of the south, the Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Amorite dwell in the mountain, and the Canaanite dwells by the sea and on the bank of the Jordan. Caleb, who was, um, Caleb was uh, from the tribe of Judah. Caleb silenced the people toward Moses and said, We shall surely ascend and conquer it, for we can surely do it. But the men who ascended with him said, We cannot ascend to that people, for it is too strong for us. They brought forth to the children of Israel an evil report on the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have passed to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people that we saw in it were huge. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of the giant from among the Nephilim. Were like the grass, were, we were like grasshoppers in our eyes, and so we were in their eyes. The entire assembly raised up and issued a voice. The people went up and the people went, uh, the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron and this entire assembly. I should say Moshe, if I want to say Aaron like that. It's just coming off the page at me today. Uh, and the entire assembly said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt. Oh, vey. If only we died in the land of Egypt, or if we had died in the wilderness. Why is Hashem bringing us to this land to die by the sword? Our wives and young children will be taken captive. It is it not better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us appoint a leader and let us to return to Egypt. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the entire congregation of the assembly of the children of Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of uh, Jephune, of the spies of the land, tore their garments. They spoke to the entire assembly of the children of Israel, saying, The land that we pass through to spy it out, the land is very, very good. If Hashem desires us, he will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. But do not rebel against Hashem. You should, uh, you should not fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. Hashem is with us. Do not fear them. But the entire assembly said, to pelt them with stones. And the glory of Hashem appeared in the tent of meeting and all the children to, to all the children of Israel. Hashem said to Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will they not have faith in me, despite all the signs that I have performed in their midst? I will smite them with a plague and annihilate them, and I shall make you a greater and more powerful nation than they. Moses said to Hashem, then Egypt, from whose midst you brought up this nation with your power, will hear, and they will say about the inhabitants of this land, they have heard that you, Hashem, are in the midst of this people, that you, Hashem, appeared eye to eye, and your cloud stands over them, and that in a pillar of cloud you go before them by day, in a pillar of fire by night, yet you killed this people like a single man. Then the nations that heard of your fame will say, because Hashem lacked the ability to bring this people to the land that he had sworn to give them, he slaughtered them in the wilderness. <clears throat> and now, may the strength of my Lord be magnified as you have spoken, saying, Hashem, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, forgiver of iniquity and willful sin, and who cleanses, but does not cleanse completely, recalling the iniquity of parents upon children of the third and fourth generations, Forgive now the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your kindness, and as you have forgiven this people from, e from Egypt until now. And Hashem said, I will forgive because of your word. But as I live, and the glory of Hashem shall fill the entire world, that all the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tested me these ten times, and have not heeded my voice, if they will see the land that I have, sh I have sworn to give their forefathers. And all who anger me shall not see it. But my servant Caleb, because of a different spirit, was with him, and he followed me wholeheartedly. I shall bring him to the land to which he came, and his offspring shall possess it. The Amalekite and the Canaanite dwell in the valley tomorrow, Turn and journey toward the wilderness in the direction of the Sea of Reeds. 
Hashem spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long for this evil assembly that provokes complaints against me? I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel, whom they have provoked against me, say to them, As I live, the word of Hashem, if I shall not do to you as you have done, have you, as you have spoken in my ears, in this wilderness shall your carcasses drop. All of you who were counted in any of your numberings from twenty years of age and above, whom you provoked against me, if you shall come to the land about which I have raised my hand in an oath to settle you there, except for Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun, and your ch young children of whom you said they will be taken captive, I will bring them. They shall know the land that you have despised, but your carcasses shall drop in the wilderness. Your children will roam in the wilderness for 40 years and bear your guilt until your carcasses shall cease to be in the wilderness. Like the number of the days that you spied out the land, which was 40 days, a year, a day for a year, a day for a year shall your shall you bear your iniquities. 40 years, and you shall comprehend, saying from me, I am a I Hashem have spoken. If I shall not do this to this entire evil assembly that gathers against me in this wilderness, shall they cease to be, and there shall they die. Okay. Okay, part one. There you go. So where can I begin? Um, since I've done a show on, on this particular channel, the Idol Smasher channel, I've, uh, a lot's happened. Um, everything from uh, a pandemic lockdown to uh, a coup. Probably a couple of coups by the sound of it. I'm not going to take sides. I'm not going there. Um, okay. Rosalie, do you want to start or shall I go? Start where? Uh, anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, it took, there were 12 men who went, mm -hmm. uh, two, um, gave a glowing report or actually it was Caleb, but, uh, um, he and and uh, and uh, Joshua yeah. tore their clothes in protest, and and mm -hmm. everyone else, everyone else just freaked out, right? And they freaked the entire assembly, two point five roughly million people, mm -hmm. um, lost paradise. Not cool. Not cool. No. Think of what they said. They we were grasshoppers in their eyes. Um, and so we were in theirs. Um, it's fear. They stoked fear, which brings dread. How many times does Hashem say in the Bible, do not fear, do not fear? Quite I, a few. I just leveled Egypt. <laughs> I, I just passed you through the Red Sea. Okay. Yeah. Do not fear. Do not fear. And yet, yet we fear. Um, Hashem is warning us about this kind of behavior and human behavior 3,005, 600 years ago. The, um, I just didn't think that we would get, I, I never really uh, imagined. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, working, you know, I've worked in media before, and so I understand. You know, I understand the the the, the responsibility and, and the right way to do things. I I uh, I'm very well aware of um, George, or, um, Orson Welles' effect. Oh the effect yeah. The uh the that the mass media, uh, keeping an entire third of a continent together on one common thought, um, or not the entire, but you can actually network people together, and and mm -hmm. and, that, and a lot of people freaked out. So I understand that there is a, a definite difference between, you know, he said, go spy out the land, you know, go, go do some undercover reporting. That's what he was saying. <laughs> right. You know where I'm going with this, right? You know where I'm going with this. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, he and bring back and and tell us and bring back uh, a report. And um, they didn't give just a report; they gave commentary. They interjected their own fear into the story and their own short sightings and shortcomings onto other people. And the entire congregation came and heard that and they all freaked out. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad that it lost every single one of them paradise. Yeah. 40 days in the desert or 40 years in the desert would everybody uh, who was once a slave would die. Everybody else gets to go in and the young at this time. Right. It's kind of funny because uh, myth has it that every day everybody woke up, they dug themselves a pit and stood in the pit to see who was going to die. If you died, you got buried. If you didn't, you climbed out and you filled in the hole. Every day for 40 years. Wow. All right. Say that, that again. Can, can you repeat that? Whoa. The rumor, ha- the myth has it that once a Shem passed that, Decree. Everybody went out and dug themselves pits and stood in the pits in case they died. This way, people didn't have to pick them up, and all they had to do was cover them. Wow. Yep. For forty years, every day. An evil report. Yep. Almost sounds like the Holocaust. <laughs> Well, that's what we've got going on here in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Evil reporting, evil speech. I mean, I knew we had, I knew it was deep in some of steeped in some of it, but uh, after the after seeing the past year and the way things changed, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's evil. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's Pavlov at his, at his Pavlov would be proud. He ring, they ring they ring the bell and the dog salivated. Yeah. Right. They induced so much fear. They had us wiping down our groceries when we got back. Wiping down our grocery bag mm-hmm. and wiping down the groceries with gloves and masks on and goggles before we brought them in our house. That's what they had people doing. Oh, I know. I was, I was there. I, I, I lived through it. I was doing that at work. Yeah, you were. You were. Yeah, you were. Uh, yeah, I was getting. Were, <laughs> yeah, I know. Kept going. Um. <clears throat> Here's a little something out of the Gutnik I thought I would share. Um, and this kind of marries because it, it, some of what happened last week was uh, that we get to talk about was Miriam and how a great woman like that can um, give an evil report, basically talking mm-hmm. smack on Moses. And she got her right. mm-hmm. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. This is when it, this is, you know, so just something here. This is from Rashi. Um, on uh, um, it's called Miriam and the Spies. Um, in this comment uh, to verse uh, to verse one, and this is in I think last week's yeah this is last week's uh, from last week's, um, and this week's portion. Okay, all right, we're good, we're good, we're good. <sighs> um, in his comments to verse one, Rashi explains why the Torah placed the sec- placed the section dealing with the sin of the spies immediately after the account of Miriam's sin. This prompts the following questions: A. <clears throat> the spies were sent out on the 29th of Sivan, um, immediately after Miriam's period of quarantine was complete on the 28th of Shiva- of Sivan. So why does Rashi ask? Uh, why does the section dealing with the spies follow the section dealing with Miriam? Surely the reason is obvious because one event occurred straight after the other. That's one. B. Why does Rashi write that Miriam was punished over matters of speech and not simply punished for Lashan Hara, or slander? The explanation is that Rashi was not troubled here by a specific problem with our verse, but rather with a general question regarding the sin of the spies at the literal level. And this question can be answered, explains, explained Rashi, through understanding why the sin of the spies is recorded immediately after the sin of Miriam. Of course, the reader will only have to qu- uh, have this have this question after reading the entire section dealing with the spies, 
and not here at the beginning, beginning of the Parsha. Nevertheless, Rashi chose to address the matter here. Okay. Rashi was troubled uh, by the general question, what sin did the spies commit? They were commissioned to explore the land and report what they saw, and that it, and that's precisely what they did. Even when they reported that the inhabitants of the land were extremely powerful and they could not imagine how the battle could be won, they were still telling the truth, <clears throat> as we see from the fact that they were not uh, accused by Caleb of lying. Why then were they punished? Rashi answers that this matter can be clarified by addressing another question. Why does the section dealing with the spies follow the section dealing with Miriam? Although the sin of the spies followed immediately after Miriam's sin, which is a good reason for one to follow the other in Torah, in this case, however, it would have been more appropriate to record some other event between them. By describing two sins of a similar nature, one after another, the reader may be left with the impression that Miriam's sin was similar in severity to the sin of the spies. And she only received a lesser punishment because she did not cause others to sin too. So Rashi asks, why does the section dealing with the spies follow the section dealing with Miriam when there is no comparison between the 70 uh, severity of the two? Rashi explains, or Rashi answers, excuse me, because she was punished for being preoccupied with speech, for speaking about her brother, and these wicked people saw what happened to her and did not, and did not learn a lesson. In other words, while it is true that these wicked people committed a sin of immense proportions, whereas Miriam's oversight was relatively minor, nevertheless, the Torah records both of them together to explain why the spy's sin was indeed so severe, because they should have learned the lesson from Miriam. While the two sins differ greatly in gravity, they did, not, they did represent a similar mistake of judgment. So having witnessed Miriam's sin and her subsequent punishment, the spies were tremendously irresponsible in allowing themselves to repeat a similar mistake. The spies basically went out and spread rumor, too. They, they, they had the multitude, and they, they whipped up the crowd. Whereas with, with Miriam, that didn't happen. Yeah. And plus the crowd was not with a mixed multitude it was easy to do that and they sinned against god it was one thing to sin against moses but it's another thing to sin against god mm -hmm. this is a trick that's i think in our and it's a human problem i can only speak from culturally in the west but uh the uh you're a sinner um to see yourself as less than um, who am I to stand up for myself kind of a thing. Um, and it just makes, and they already felt bad. They, they didn't have faith in themselves. You know, we were grasshoppers in our own eyes. That's how they felt. Right. Um, <clears throat> they didn't consider Hashem. They didn't consider Hashem's exactly. word. Exactly. They didn't, and when they gave this thing, these guys were huge. They were trembling, but don't worry. And it was proven to their children later on. Moses goes in there and whoops their butts. The giants. Moses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Warrior. <laughs> Our man, baby. <laughs> um, so it happens and everyone gets to see that. Uh, oh, hey, Karen. Good night. Thank you so much. Hello, Carla J. Good to see you here. Um, we appreciate it. Come on in if you like. Hit that button if you got a, something you want to add or a question. Please, we would love to hear from you. Or any of the great little places down here. Good little links to all of us who do the little Torah thing here down there. So um, feel free to stop by. Orphans of Avraham is a private group, but that's okay because, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have a nice solid people where you don't let in all the riffraff, just goofy people like me. And, whatnot. and Rosalie, they'll let Rosalie. <laughs> She's good. She's good. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. <clears throat> Thank you. No, um, yeah, I had to speak. Separate issue here. That's okay. So my point is, is I think one of the things they like to do, and I think we're becoming more aware of it now because it's so theatrical and it's so over the top. I mean, it's the worst overacting possible. But, uh, the, you know, the people who talk to us every day in our, in our medias and our government and whatnot, and governments, um, <laughs> They, they they like you scared and they like you uptight and they like you all kind of rustled and 
oh, woe is me, and oh, the world's coming to an end, and yeah, price of gas and the price of food and things that are, it's, yeah, it stinks, but um, it'll pass. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we can't be, I mean, we shouldn't be just as a nation or as people. This is a lesson in how easily it is for the, I mean, you're among the masses, and when they're all freaking out and, and weeping and uh, you know, scared, it's going to affect you one way or another. And you're probably going to follow suit, maybe not for different reasons, but it will heavily affect you. Every neighbor around the whole nation of people out in the middle of nowhere. Mass why hysteria. We, yeah, here, yeah. Why couldn't we die in Egypt? I don't blame God for wanting to kill. I just, I don't wipe them out. I don't, yep. I would not, I am not God. I, I, that there wouldn't be an Israel. If I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just they must not, they must not have said that 21 times. You know what I mean? Yeah, they made it a habit. <laughs> oh, and we did. What did we learn we, about, about the manna? You know, oh, if only we were in Egypt, we'd have fish and me. Oh, mm -hmm. why don't we go back to Egypt? Okay, I'll stuff meat into you till it comes out your nose. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, same thing here. Um, I don't think a lot of people, I don't think it negatively affected a lot of people, but it affected enough to greatly shift um, our nation's future. And uh, I think it set us back. Um, it's going to set us back. I'm not saying that God's going to punish us 40 years or something like that. However, I do think there's a natural consequence to this kind of behavior for any nation, mm -hmm. especially one like ours, which is kind of new and, and, um, well, it's, it's taken Germany about 70 so far. To crawl out of their hole. <laughs> yeah, and Poland and all the rest of them. Or the Holocaust, so hey. I mean, these are good men. These are people you looked up to. And, uh, you know, these were a leader in every tribe. Came back like this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what do you do? What I mean... We got to learn from it. I mean, it's tour is a book of missed opportunities, and this was one. See where they could have gone in. What we, what I think we're getting here, and I'm not. Uh, the, the point is, they could have gone right in. Uh, oh yeah. Caleb and Joshua said we could have taken it. Oh yeah, and if they would have had that little mustard seed and say, "Hey, we got a fire. We got you know, we got a cloud. You know, we got a fire at night. We had a cloud. You know, moves. We move every time. It's like they just threw that all out the window." Many great things that come up in our lives. I think um, they took it for granted. Yeah, I fear the youth of our country because they've kind of been raised to take advantage or uh, take take what they've been given for granted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's not necessarily their fault, but we're still going to pay for it. Uh, I, you know, I was never called Nazi ever, especially reading Torah all the time. I was never called a Nazi, and suddenly out of the blue. You had tons of people everywhere and people on the street and they're wanting to burn the place down, you know, because we haven't freed our slaves yet or something. I don't remember why people wanted to burn the country down. I, but it, 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 it got a lot of, it got a lot of pull. They were able to rabble rouse and, and, mm -hmm. and, and people f ate it up. Oh, just, yeah, I know. I mean, they, they blew off Oregon, you know, Portland and all that burning that city down like Atlanta at one time. But they turn around and the biggest beef that the Democrats got is with January 6th. Come on, people. Yeah. Those are just examples. We're not going to get into talking about it. That's just examples that's going on. I don't know. We've been given this book. We've been given this text for a good reason. We uh, we should learn from it. Mm-hmm. I think, I, I think we might be coming out of that haze. It was an induced haze. Uh, I'll say that much. Yeah. But um, people voted mostly from what we're getting is a lot of people voted uh, against Trump. They didn't vote for Joe Biden. They were voting against Trump. They were so angry. They had convinced everyone. Right. Trump's going to have you back in chains. He's going to take all your guns. He's going to get us in World War Three. Uh, all this stuff. He's a Russian bot. All <laughs> Who stuff. pulled that different, didn't he? <laughs> oh, that guy. 
<laughs> oh man. I, I just, it's, it's just an amazing thing to me that, you know, this stuff is so solid 3000 years later, solid as our, as solid can be. I was yeah. going to say as a rock. Um, and if you don't think God's forgiving there, he would, he was ready to wipe them out. And I will forgive them for your for your words. That's a that's that's a man. If you if you can soften God's heart, that's a man's man right there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Way to go, Mister Humble. Um. Also, I just kind of thought it was interesting here. I wanted to bring up something here. Um. Oh, another. Uh, well, I'll get to that. Okay. Um. When a proselyte comes to live with you, um, actually, I'm reading out of the uh, the Gutnik edition, which they add a few words. Um, sorry, let me, 1517, I think is where I'm at. We'll go over here to Mechan Mamre. Um, talking about offerings and, and bringing up offerings. Um, and it says when, uh, where is that here? It was 15, 17. It's the sixth portion. <clears throat> 10 through 19. Go back to 10. Yeah, it's a 19. <clears throat> 19. 15, 19. Yeah. And when you eat of the bread of the land, you shall set aside a gift for the Lord. Is that what you're getting at? That was part of, I was, yeah, I was going to bring up that much like your first fruits and your first born. Uh -huh. um, oh, the proselyte is 1515. 1550. Why can I, it's just, it's scary. It's scary. I'm glad you're here. Oh, as for the congregation, of, uh, yeah. And if a, uh, if, that's the word here they're using. That is a ger and a resh uh -huh. that I see there, isn't that? And, that, and that's one of them ger things, right? That's right. <laughs> and if a stranger and if a ger sojourn with you or whosoever may be among you throughout your generations and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord as you did, so shall they do. That's right. As for the or he do, as for the congregation, there shall be one statute for you both, and for the stranger that sojourn with you, a statute forever throughout your generations, as you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one ordinance shall be for you both, and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. This is brought up again, and it's all and it, you'll and it comes. This is once again, it's it's the offering that anybody is allowed to bring. Um, not everybody can make a certain kind of offering, uh, uh, but a, a, a non-Jewish person can come and, and make an offering. That's how uh, Abraham's offering was accepted. Mo, uh, Noah's offering was accepted. Um, Abel. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on for a long time. Um, one statute and for you, the sojourner and you, I mean, I mean the, 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 the altar that M Moshe sits up, on the border, as you cross the Jordan going into Israel, he sets up a stone offering for elevation offerings, for burnt offerings, as it said with Noah. It goes back to Noah, a sweet savor, uh, S A V O U R, and that's your savor, right. savor, you know. Uh -huh. uh, one, you know, that's one one place they can, they are, they, it's the same, and he he made that for all, all people. It, I just. I haven't read the Divine Code yet. I heard they finished it. Mm -hmm. Yay, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> did they, did they, have, have, you, have you seen it? Uh, okay, I showed it to you. I did. Yeah, you showed something to me. I, I <clears throat> um. Yeah, apparently they finished the Divine Code. I've been saying I've been waiting for this for like years on years because I was I studied the the first volume, uh, thoroughly. Mm -hmm. uh, where the book was falling apart. Uh, and then I kind of notice that they just kind of take an approach that it doesn't really jibe. I noticed there's a part eight. There's seven laws, part eight, and they call it 
the pious Gentile and the Ger Toshav in Israel. And I don't know if I want to read the book. <laughs> Why do you feel safer not knowing? <laughs> um, I don't know if I want to spend the money. Um, because it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should get it just to do it. It's not that I feel safer. Uh, I just don't know if, like I guess I don't know if I want to spend the money on it, but I am curious to hear what they have to say. It's a big brouhaha since I was last on the Irish Smashville channel because of this stuff. I don't even have the last episode on because uh, of reasons, but um, yeah, it was a big hubbub about uh, where the non-Jew belongs. And basically it's in a little Noahide center over there, way on the other side of town. Go play, go play with your rainbow. Enjoy mm -hmm. your rainbow t-shirt. Here's your official rainbow t-shirt. Now go over there and play. Right. And, uh, I never liked Noah Hyde leaders. I'll just be, I'll say it right now. I right. Know. I don't like them. I do. <laughs> it's not another religion, first of all. And that's what they turned it into was a third religion. They're, they got cocky. The, they're very, very. And, um, yeah, I know. I, I was there. So, I guess that's calmed down a bit. Um, but it says right there in Torah, for the stranger, the one among you, um, one law for you both, one statute for your both. Um, not two different statutes. Now, of course, statutes aren't changed. The, I mean, this is written for when we go into the land. So, you know. Correct. But if the Jew can be in diaspora, cannot the Gare be in diaspora as well? Correct. Yes. But the thing is, one thing you got to remember, too, is that the world as we know it is also known as Israel. One day. Keep that, keep that in mind. Well, so there shouldn't be two. There should not be another religion, because if the world itself is Israel and it was given to man to take care of. Mm -hmm. You know, it still applies. So technically, in, in in a roundabout way, we are in the land of Israel. <clears throat> I, I I certainly uh, I certainly believe that the earth and the the sky are witnesses to all of us. Oh yeah. You know, not just uh, a lot of people have that notion. Oh, that just means Jews in the land. No, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure that all this. I mean, you know, some people. I don't know. Um, it would certainly seem that way. I mean, the, a lot of natural disasters. What do they say? Whenever it rains profusely, those are the, those are tears. Um, possibly the misuse of water. I remember Doreen was talking the other day, and and uh, earthquakes. Why why these things happen? Um, and a land that devours its inhabitants. Boy, I can't wait for the rebellion. The other rebellion, Korok. That's going to be a fun one. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, hey, <clears throat> that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny because Afghanistan and all that's doing all those and talking crap, talking their crap, and they're having earthquakes. Yeah, big one. Yeah, I know. And the and the thing is, is that I sat there and laughed because the last report I gave on earthquakes is that one of the imams said that the earthquakes are responsible because women are wearing blue jeans. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> got a national, got an international news and said. Well, the earthquakes are here because women are wearing blue jeans. When, what? <laughs> and he said it out loud. Like I said, the international TV is like, oh, you deserve to die. <laughs> if you're that backwater, you deserve to die. <laughs> Speaking of bad reports, I want to show you something which you probably haven't seen or aren't going to ever see again. Okay. You ready? It's as long totally as you're not unrelated. naked, we're good. <laughs> Totally unrelated. I know we got to get to half tour, but uh, or half tour, but uh, Ooh, red man chew. You going fishing? Um, not in this heat, but um, I'm saving this for the fourth. Just a second there, Katie. Hang on a minute. Uh, all right. So, yeah, apparently they, it's no longer red man because uh, it was offensive to have an Indian. Oh, good lord. Yeah, with uh, oh, and I said, yes, I said, uh, Pueblos and Dios. Yes, I said, uh, Indian, uh, Native American. But it's apparently offensive because you know tobacco. What did tobacco and Indians have anything to do with it? I mean, 
That's just plain old uh, white supremacy <laughs> associating those two together. No, it's I not. Want, I wanted to show that because I found it. <laughs> then a buddy said, well, if you thought that was great, and he uh, knew the, the lady who worked up at the store, and she gave me the box. So I got that. I'm not even a chewing tobacco fan, really. Right. But I mean, occasionally, yeah, it's, yeah, I, yeah, whatever. But uh, I'm not even a fan. When I found that, I, that yeah, it's now America's best. And I took the Indian off. I was like, ah. But at least we got little Debbie. We got Mr. Clean. And uh, who else we still got out there? Uh, Captain Gordon. Crunch. <laughs> Captain Crunch. Yeah. Oh, Lucky Charms. Yeah. Lucky's still around. Yes. Okay. Uh. All right. Um, Wesley. Yes. Wesley was on here. He says, um, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. 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 All that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't do comic, but we can talk comic books, but we're, I'm more studied on tour right now. Uh, right. Than comic books and comic book imagery. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little, I guess I'm a little prudish here in my Torah study today. Um, we have a half Torah. If you're, uh, Wondering what a half Torah is, it is a portion of the Hebrew Bible that is not of the Torah, but directly pertains to a portion that we read this week. And, uh, of course, we are on Shalak, and I don't have a half Torah banner. Woe is me. Um, well, this week, our half Torah will be, uh, we've got Joshua chapter 2, 1 through 24. How are we looking on your end, Rosalie? That's exactly what I've got. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So if you're following along home, once again, Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 24. Joshua, son of Nun, dispatched from Situm two men, spies, secretly saying, go observe the land in Jericho. So they traveled and came to the house of a woman innkeeper whose name was Rahab. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. I like this. This is nice. I like mm -hmm. this anyway. And they slept and they slept there. <laughs> Rosalie said, uh huh, we know. Uh, it was told to the king of Jericho, it was it was told to the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the land. The king of Jericho then sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men whom you have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out the entire land. The woman had taken the two men and hidden them. So she said, true, the men did come to me, but I did not know from where they came, from where they were, excuse me. When the city, when the city gate was uh, to close at dark, the men left. I do not know where the men went. Chase after them quickly, for you cannot, for you can't overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and had hidden them in the stalks of flax that she had arranged on the roof. So the men chased after them in the direction of the Jordan to the fords, and they closed the gate soon after the pursuers had gone after them. They had not yet gone to sleep when she came up to them on the roof and said, and she said to them, I know that Hashem has given you the land and that your terror has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land have melted because of you. For we have heard how Hashem dried up the water of the Sea of Reeds before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two Amorite kings across the Jordan, to Sihon and to Og, whom you have utterly destroyed. When we heard our hearts melted, no spirit is left in a man because of you. For Hashem, your God, he is the God of the heavens above and the earth below. And now please swear to me by Hashem, since I have done kindness with you, that you too will do kindness with my father's house and give me an authentic countersign. Keep alive my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all that they have and rescue our souls from death. The men said to her, Our soul is in your place to die. If you do not reveal this discussion of ours, then it will be when Hashem gives us the land, we will deal with you in kindness and truth. And she lowered them by the rope through the window, for her house was in a wall of the fortification, and in the fortification she lived. She said to them, Go to the mountain, lest your pursuers meet you. Hide there for a three-day period until the pursuers return, then you may go on your way. The men said to her, we shall be clean from this oath of which you of which oh, 
We shall be clean from this oath of yours, which you made us bear. Behold, when we come into the land, the scarlet cord shall you bind to the window from which you lowered us. And your father and your mother and your brothers and all your father's household shall be, you shall gather into your house. When it will be that anyone who leaves the doors of your house for the outside, his blood guilt shall be upon his own head. We will be clean, but anyone who will be with you inside the house, his blood, get, blood guilt shall be on our head. If a hand is upon him, and if you shall, and if you will tell of this discussion of ours, we will be clean from your oath that you have made us swear. She said, like your words, so it is. And she sent them away, and they went, and she tied the scarlet cord to the window. And they went, and they came to the mountain, and stayed there for three day for a three-day period until the pursuers returned. The pursuers sought along the entire way, but they did not find. The two men returned and descended from the mountain. They crossed over the Jordan and came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told them all that happened to them. They said to Joshua, For Hashem has given all the land into our hands. Also, all the inhabitants of the land have melted before us. So ends the reading. Yes. Yeah, I don't have as much fear. I worry for my country, and I'm, I get... Very, very frustrated, but, uh, you know, this will pass. Um, it's going to pass. It's just a matter. It's, you know, we're not ready for paradise yet. <laughs> not saying that we had paradise at any one time, but there was, uh, you know, if you run things right and you remember the Ten Commandments and you remember Israel, you'd be surprised uh, the prosperity that can bring. And it's a shame. I mean, I, I, I hear I did. Um, did uh, Biden again give more money to the PLO? That's my understanding. Oh, good gravy. The only thing these people know how to do is kill. And they're terrible at it. But they keep trying. Mm -hmm. Look, you, you can have faith in what you want, but uh, don't be an enemy to Israel if you want to achieve anything in this world now. <laughs> right. Um it's the three laws of being a Jew. <clears throat> they tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, that's pretty much that's pretty much every Jewish festival right there. Every every holiday. Yeah, they're here for a reason. They're not going away. No. Nope. And um, and you should yep, see. Where, them. Where's Rome gone? Where's the Greeks gone? Who's still Everybody. around? Yay. Yeah. And not for lack of people trying. That's true. Look, it's it's not even really about the Jewish people. They're they're more an example of anything, and they're carrying the Torah. But it's the Torah itself, and it's what it's teaching us. Mm -hmm. And the sooner we bind to the statutes, I can't build. A, I'm no Levite. I can't keep half the laws in Torah, even if I wanted to. But at least go for seven. I'd say go for the ten, just to. But people don't really understand the ten quite, and there's different translations, and they add lying over this and that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. You know, um, go for the seven laws. It's it's that the only place to start, and it's still relevant throughout the entire Torah. That's right. Um, and encourage other people to do the same. Uh, Dennis Prager said today on his fireside chat that he got Charlie Kirk. He's um young, um, hip dude who does the uh, Turning Point USA, conservative guy, and goes to campuses. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, he said he was real happy to hear that um, uh, according to uh, uh, Dennis Prager, he's uh, he's now he's now keeping Shabbat. He he turns off his computer and uh, and he does the whole he does a whole twenty four hour Shabbat too. Yay. And uh, I thought that was great, and and that's that's a good thing. And and he's like, we have Christmas and Thanksgiving every week. Um, friends Hello? with and whatnot. Carla, hi, hi, hi Carla. Carla, hi, how are you? Doing Good. great. Glad to see you. You too. We got about five minutes left on the live the live portion here. Is there anything that you wanted to bring up or uh, 
<laughs> Discuss about what? What are you laughing at? <laughs> she wants a gin martini. <laughs> <laughs> the lemon <laughs> stirred. That would be nice right now. That would yeah. be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Aside, aside from a good martini, is there any, anything you want to bring up or discuss here in the before we get off the live portion about this week's tour portion or uh, uh, anything at all? Or? No, I was just pop, popping in. To, I was just popping in to say hi. Hi. It's good to see you. Um, you we'll come back too because uh, we're going to keep doing this. We'll simulcast on uh, the Tour Friends po uh, podcast, the Tour Friends channel, Tour and Friends, and then. Uh, uh, Facebook and on the Idol Smasher too. So, yeah. Um, any oh, any last uh, words or anything, Rosalie? Before we uh, before we turn the turn this over. No, nope, I'm good. I'm like I said, I'm coming off of chemo, so I'm pretty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Internet, hey, it's good. Yeah, it's kicking my butt this week, so I was like, all right, I'll be better tomorrow. Good. Wow. Yeah. Well. Uh, here's to your health. Um, yes, and to Carla as well. Let me check Yay. Facebook see if we get any, uh, any anybody else who was. Uh, oh, we got you. Got to take care of you. And um, uh, all right. I, I appreciate you, Wesley. You're, you're kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. That's some interesting stuff. That's all I'm going to say. He's got some interesting mm -hmm. stuff to say. We uh, have him in here. But uh, um, James Adel Smasher at gmail.com is how you can get in touch with me directly. Of course, Tour Friends Podcast .com, the Tour and Friends uh, YouTube channel. We're here and the Idol Smasher YouTube channel uh, at the Idol Smasher on um, Twitter. And hey, my bit other hobby outside of Torah is radio. And uh, uh, you can usually do a, a word search sometimes it pops up it's the radio awareness project dot wordpress dot com and uh everything you need to know about how to make radio work for you your family and your community right now uh, you'd be really surprised what's out there and and uh the amount of money you could probably save on a on a general cell phone bill with what's available in radio technology in your area coast to coast here in the states for all those out of the states hey you know it's uh you probably got some services in your country too um that's it i want to get out of here i want to go make me a gin martini no i'm, I'm kidding <laughs> I'm lower sideband 38 later on the cb if anybody up and wants to talk dx until then shema shalom take care yeah, of yourself shalom. take care of somebody else and uh and um and uh here's uh here's to hashem leading the world Amen. be well everybody we'll see you next week mm -hmm. if i can get